It was a slow night for Sean and his partner, but things picked up when they found a baby in the trash and rescued her. It was a good act, but it had damning consequences. However, 20 years later, he got a surprise that left him in tears. It was a dark night when Sean and his partner were driving through one of the roughest neighborhoods in their community. The heavy beam of their headlamps swept through the road before them as they drove slowly, while surveying their surroundings for miscreants. They were doing their rounds and making sure that no one was doing what they weren't supposed to. This area was the least developed part of the city. No cop liked coming here, because it always had one problem or the other, and Sean knew that it was only a matter of time before they caught a case as well. He had no idea that the case was going to be one that would change his life forever. While they were driving slowly through town, a car suddenly sped past them, driving in a zigzag manner. Sean and his partner immediately guessed that the person was driving under the influence, and they could endanger not just their lives, but also that of anyone who could be in their path. At once, Sean turned the patrol car around and went after the car. The siren was blaring overhead as he floored the pedal. Sean caught up with the car and overtook it, forcing the car to break into the curb before coming to a halt. When both vehicles stopped, a heavy silence fell over the place. Looking around, it dawned on Sean that they had chased the car into a dark alley, but that didn't matter to him. He stepped out of the patrol car and went to get the driver out. Sure enough, the driver was drunk and even had a half-empty bottle of an alcoholic drink on the passenger seat beside him. Just as Sean cuffed him, a sudden cry pierced through the night, startling all of them. They froze as they glanced at each other. It had been weak, but they were sure that it sounded like the cry of a baby. A few seconds later, the cry came again, and it was on for a longer time. There was definitely a baby crying somewhere down the alley. They knew then that they had to investigate. They placed the drunk driver in the patrol car, and then with their torchlight and their baton, they began to walk down the alley. The deeper they went, the darker it became. There were tall buildings, and they cast deep shadows over the ground, blotting out the rays of the moon. They followed the cry of the baby, and soon they found her at a dump site. She was wrapped up in thin blankets that did nothing to cushion her against the trash she had been placed on top of, or even protect her from the cold night. The baby looked like she had been crying for way too long, because her cheeks were flushed and she looked sick. Sean was shocked that someone could be so evil as to abandon their baby in the trash. He knew for a fact that it was a case of abandonment, because there was no way a newborn baby would be in such a place unless someone had placed her there. He had two sons of his own, and he couldn't even imagine doing something so horrible to them. Her cries melted his heart, and it hurt him that someone could choose to be so cruel to such an innocent child. He knelt beside the baby, gently lifting her and embracing her to his chest. She felt so small and fragile in his arms that he was scared that she would vanish or something. The moment he held her close to himself, it was as if the baby knew that she could trust him so she immediately stopped crying. He smiled at that as he gently rocked her. He could see that she felt safe in his arms, and he promised himself that he was going to make sure she continued feeling safe with him. The cops returned to their patrol car, and with the drunk driver in the back seat, they went to the police station and reported everything. Sean's partner rode up the drunk driver and threw him into jail. As for Sean, he took the infant to the hospital for a proper checkup. It took a few hours, but the results came out eventually, and it was good news. She was healthy. All she had was a little fever, caused by crying so hard for so long, and also being exposed to the cold weather. The doctor told Sean that the baby had not been exposed long enough to incur any dangerous conditions, all thanks to their prompt arrival. Sean was glad that the baby turned out fine. After they were done at the hospital, he reported the case to child services. He also offered to temporarily foster the child until they were able to find her a permanent home. When Sean turned up on his doorstep with the baby in his arms, his wife Lillian regarded him with suspicion. Even though he had called ahead to inform her that he was coming home with a baby and that he would explain it all when they met, 
she still regarded him with suspicion. She thought that he'd been cheating on her and had gotten a girl pregnant, and the baby was the result. Sean was baffled by the conclusion she had drawn and simply went into the house. When they eventually had a conversation, he explained how he and his partner had encountered the child and how he decided to offer temporary refuge until authorities could determine the best course of action. Skeptical about it, Lillian agreed to the temporary stay. She helped care for the baby, and their two sons were delighted to have her in the house. Meanwhile, Sean and his team diligently searched for the baby's mother. Their aim wasn't for her return. Instead, they intended to arrest her upon discovery. Their objective was to locate other blood relatives of the baby so they could leave her in their care. However, no matter how hard they tried, they just couldn't find the mother. It was as if the baby had fallen from the sky and landed on the dump site. By the time the baby clocked a month old, Sean was no closer to finding her mother than he was back when he had just started. He knew that it was time for him to release the little girl so she could be taken in by an orphanage that would find a good family for her. However, Sean was strongly opposed to the idea. The notion of residing in a crowded orphanage or enduring rationed meals didn't sit well with him. He couldn't bear the thought of being separated from the baby, and the prospect of never seeing her again filled him with fear. Recalling the promise he had made to protect her, Sean realized he wouldn't be able to fulfill it if she were far from him. Rejecting the idea of her moving from foster home to foster home, he desired a better life for her and believed he could provide it. Therefore, he chose to adopt her. Lillian hated this new development, and she didn't hesitate to tell Sean. She reminded him that they already had two sons and they didn't have the resources to cater to yet another mouth. Sean promised her that he would work harder to make sure that neither the boys nor the infant lacked anything. He was ready to work double shifts just to make it work. At that point, he was willing to do everything just to make sure that the girl remained with them. Eventually, Lillian agreed to welcome the baby into the family, prompting Sean to initiate the adoption process immediately. After a few months, the process was completed, and since the baby hadn't been named yet, he decided to name her Alice. Thus, she officially became a member of the family. Initially, everything seemed to be going well for her, but things began to change when she was a few years old. As the years went by, Sean tried his very best by Alice, and Lillian did the opposite. Sean always strived to shower her with as much love and attention as he did with his boys. When he bought toys for his sons, he made sure he got some for Alice as well. Meanwhile, Lillian went out of her way to make life hell for Alice. When Alice turned 16, she began treating the poor girl like a house help. She forced her to do so many house chores while her two sons, who were both older than Alice, did nothing but play around. Lillian only treated Alice unfairly when Sean wasn't around because she knew that he doted on the girl and he wouldn't condone such behavior. Due to Lillian's presence in the house, Sean was forced to take on other jobs so the family could cope. As a result, he was always away from home. Alice couldn't share any of these horrible treatments with Sean because Lillian had promised to beat her severely if she dared to tell him, so she suffered in silence for years. When Sean was home, Lillian pretended to care about Alice, giving him the false hope that things were fine. Also, Sean and Lillian had agreed never to reveal that Alice was adopted. They were going to do that when she was old enough to handle it. As a result, she had no idea that she was adopted. Hence, Lillian's wickedness towards her was baffling to Alice. She just didn't understand why her mother couldn't love her the way she loved the boys and why she was always looking to blame her for everything. Despite everything, Alice loved Lillian dearly. It was as if the more wicked Lillian was to the little girl, the more she wanted to prove her worth. So when Alice did her chores, she worked extra hard and extra fast, hoping to impress Lillian. At school, she worked way harder than her peers. She was quite intelligent and smart, and she went through school at a pace faster than her peers. She was so good that she graduated from high school at the top of her class, at the age of 16. This was a remarkable feat, but Lillian's acceptance never came. 
When she turned 18, Alice decided to look for a job so she would be able to help the family out. She didn't like the fact that Sean had to work so much and they rarely spent time together. Aside from that, her two brothers refused to work. They spent all day playing video games and refusing to do anything else. So she badly wanted to help out, but Lillian was against it. Lillian knew that once Alice started making money of her own, bossing her around would become way more difficult. The only way to keep her in check was to keep the young lady dependent on her. However, Alice really wanted to work, not only to help her family, but also for herself. All her life, Lillian had told her that she couldn't have nice things, while her brothers seemed to get them all. Now she was at an age when she could work to buy those things, so it hurt her that Lillian was against her. This time around, she decided to put her foot down when Lillian kept insisting that she shouldn't work. Alice knew Sean would be proud of her and would support her decision, so she decided to get the go-ahead from him rather than Lillian. When she shared this with Lillian, it escalated into a heated argument. At this point, Alice had already had enough and she decided it was time to let Lillian know how she truly felt about her. I don't need your permission anymore. I'm gonna ask dad, Alice yelled, her voice quivering. Why don't you ever support me? What did I ever do to you? Why do you hate me so much? Alice continued. You really wanna know why? Lillian fired back. Why? E. S. Alice answered. Why should I love you when your biological mother never did? Why should I love a girl who was picked up from a dump site? Lillian yelled and happily watched Alice's eyes widen in terror. Lillian wasn't done yet. She ran into the room, came out with Alice's adoption papers, and flung it on her. That's all the evidence you need. You're not my child and will never be. You don't belong here, Lillian yelled. This news hurt Alice to the core. She felt as if her entire life had been a lie. Now everything suddenly made sense to her. She realized why she had always been the odd one out and why she never seemed to get any love from Lillian. With tears burning through her eyes, Alice decided she was done. She no longer felt at ease or as if she belonged to this family. She wished Sean had told her the truth. She was disappointed in him, in herself, in everything. So she packed her few clothes and fled the house. With the little money she had saved over time, she got on a bus and ran to a neighboring city. She swore that she would never return to the house unless she was coming better than when she left. In the city, she tried getting a job and thankfully, she found a diner that was being run by a nice woman, Ellen. Ellen was willing to take her in. She provided salary, accommodation, and feeding while Alice worked for her. Thanks to Ellen, Alice learned what it felt like to have a mother. Ellen took her as her own daughter and was really interested in her well-being. Alice realized that all her life, she had been living with a witch, and her mother had been nothing but wicked to her. From then on, Alice tried to rebuild her life. She managed to go on to college and continued to display her intellectual prowess there. She studied business administration, and for one of her major projects, she created a template for companies to utilize in a way that would increase their earnings by more than 30%. This shot her into the limelight even before she was done with college. She graduated when she was just 20 years of age, and she was such a gem that companies were falling over themselves as they tried to recruit her. Her mind was a gold mine, and they were all willing to pay top dollar for her to help their businesses grow. All of them had mouth-watering salaries and benefits attached to them. All she had to do was pick one. Eventually, Alice made the choice she felt was the best for her, and it came with so many perks. It came with a combination located in the heart of the city, close to the company, and all the bills on the house were paid for by the company. She also got a company car that would be maintained and taken care of by the company. She was such a hit and for a long time, all everyone could speak about was how she managed to accomplish so much at such a young age. She was an inspiration to so many people, including those who were older than her. Later on, after she'd settled into her new job, she decided to return to her roots and visit Sean. He was the only reason she was going back because she knew that he was the only one who had loved her unconditionally all those years ago. However, when she got there, 
She was shocked to find that life had not been kind to Sean at all. The house was almost empty, and he looked like he'd been starving for days. It had only been about four years since she last saw him, and she couldn't believe that he had changed so much. Sean cried softly as he stared at her, unable to believe she was really there with him. He reminded her that it had been 20 years since he rescued her and reassured her that despite everything that happened, he would never regret it. He shared that after she ran away, Lillian had confessed to revealing the circumstances of Alice's birth, leading to bitter fights between them. Sean refused to forgive her for such betrayal, and the prolonged conflict began to affect his work. He started drinking and showing up late, causing frustration among his superiors. Eventually, he was fired. Once he got fired, Lillian dumped him and moved to another town. Their two sons followed her without even a second thought. Since then, he'd been alone. He had tried looking for Alice, and he had found her in the college where she was studying. But he was ashamed to show his face after what his wife did to her. He was scared that she would reject him, so he decided to return home and continue his life of loneliness. As Alice listened to him, she wept profusely. She apologized for what her absence had caused, acknowledging that if she had mustered up the courage to tell him about Lillian's mistreatment, things might have turned out differently. But then she assured him that things were better for her now and for him. She affirmed that despite what Lillian had done to her in the past, he was still her father, and she wasn't going to leave him. She then invited him to join her in the city, and so the father and daughter were reunited. Sean was so proud of all she'd accomplished. The only thing that made him sad was the fact that he'd missed out on such momentous periods of her life. But he was glad that he was with her again, and he swore to remain by her side for as long as he had breath in his lungs. Somehow, Lillian found out about Alice and managed to track her down to her house. She asked for forgiveness and begged Alice to take her back. However, Alice wasn't fooled. She knew that Lillian only wanted to come back into her life because she was now wealthy. Alice's brothers also came begging. They apologized for doing nothing when they saw their mother hurt her over and over again. She was their baby sister. They should have done something. They begged for her forgiveness. She decided to let go of her grudge and forgive them. She offered to assist them with their college application and nothing else. They were not going to mooch off her at all. She was going to make sure of it. And as for Lillian, nothing was going to her. About a year later, when Alice got her first vacation from work, she took Sean with her and together they toured several luxury islands. It was a beautiful trip, one that they both enjoyed immensely. Sean was glad that he had been the one to hear the cry all those years ago, and now she had repaid him with joy, love, and happiness that he had thought he would never have again. What a beautiful story! Do you think Alice should forgive Lillian? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. See you in the next video.